the other day in practice, you mentioned that you were concerned about outside influence. Were, were you, did something specific happen that had you concerned about that, or were you just talking in general? Uh, you know, so many general. <laughs> so many what? <one. laughs> so many queries have come to me from people in the uh, media that, about that, outside sources. Um, outside distractions that you know it's beginning to look like maybe there's something to it you know right. but you know I, I can put it off to New Year's fatigue at this level I'll, I'll drop that one on to a delayed hangover from New Year's right. it opens an interesting kind of discussion though in that is it the place of a team or of a coach to talk to guys about what they're doing when they're not at practice and not at games you know, the, the idea is that when you have a, a group of professionals um, that play anywhere more than five years, they know what it takes to play the game and they know what their job is. And the amount of work that these guys put into their conditioning and to being ready to play, it would be um, an insult for me to approach them at that level. Um, you know, eventually, you know, it's going to have to be dealt with if, if things don't improve, but it's going to have to be dealt with at a different level than about distractions or about you know what they're doing. I, th I think it's about the focus more than it is about that. There's a Yahoo report by the guy who went out to dinner with Kobe a couple months ago who says that, uh, um, you know where I'm going, where no, our, our test but and... Yahoo, Yahoo itself just... Yeah, I know. We <laughs> used to say that when we were kids, you're a Yahoo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you wouldn't uh, direct that at adults, like, so... Yahoo yeah. is more like what we would say. <laughs> well, this report indicates that um, our test had a loud confrontation with you at practice. And that he was upset because he said, basically, you coach him, but don't embarrass him publicly. Is that accurate? No, that's not accurate, but it's close to accurate. It was not a loud confrontation. It was a man-to-man -man confrontation, and it was um, obviously out of character for both that to happen in practice and for Ron. And it wasn't about embarrassing public. Public is about you know some of the issues that have been brought up that are focused about him. And did you get loud? No, I did. But oh. did he get loud? No, he didn't. It wasn't loud. So it wasn't loud. It was direct, but it wasn't loud. Did, did, did he share this specific? Comes up, uh, because it's back-to-back. -back titles and there's a different mindset now and you have to worry about guys being in cruise mode when they haven't been in the past maybe as hungry I don't know I, I don't know whether that's a response to to back to backs or it's a response to a season you know just a season in which things aren't going hopefully as just planned you know like clicking off victory after victory and you know so there's um, something that has to an element that has to boil off here, or there's a you know a refinement of our team that has to go on. It's a process, and hopefully we, we can uh, you know eliminate that and get on with our season. Here. Back to our confrontation here. Is it in your mind is something that happens in the course and it just got it revealed in a, some kind of publication, or is it more than that? It's nothing more than you know what could normally happen in the practice, and you know obviously you know there's. You know, either a spy or a camera or a leak <laughs> or something that went on in our practice. But those are things that happen in practice. And it's not the first time and it's not going to be the last. And so everything is cool between you and our test. Ron came in and apologized, not only to me, but in front of the team for you know, what he thought, said was a distraction in practice. And he, you know, that was his own desire to do that. I didn't solicit it from him. The typical so frustrations so would come into play after this kind of a stretch, though, too, right? Yeah, you know, in Ron's, in Ron's uh, defense, um, you know, I've been trying to motivate him through a variety of activities, starting from the very beginning, you know, just kind of, you know, talking about his, you know, activity level and about his, you know, sometimes his bizarre behavior. And, you know, he wants it to be in private. So, uh, you know, I just said, don't act it out in public, then we can keep it private. Well, we his conversation we is really Well, well his the way that... Do you interact yeah. with him sure. as a result? Sure. But if it's in public, if something happens in the course of a game that's uh, you know unusual, you know perhaps like happened on Christmas Day, you know it's obviously a comment that's you know you got to comment on it publicly because that that's something that acted out in, in an unusual fashion. Uh, did you hear Mark Cuban's reaction to your assessment on what 
how John just told me that, yeah. What was your reaction to his reaction to <laughs> your assessment about uh, how Butler's injury is going to impact Dallas? Mark must be really worried. <laughs> He's got to comment on that. He must be really worried. I feel badly for them. I, that's what I was saying. It's hard to replace a player that good, you know? And so, I mean, they have, you know, they do have a good player that's sitting behind him. You know, Sean's a fine player, but it's not Karan Butler, and so it's, right. it's hard to replace a player like that. What yeah. do you think about being called a boy toy, though? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I, I, I consider myself an old man. I mean, did I'm a boy toy? That's <laughs> Jeannie, uh, Jeannie indicated she thought it could have been a better comeback. Is, is that an assessment that you share as well? Or do you? Th could have been better. Yeah. There, there could have been a better one. I, I don't know. Mark's, Mark gets riled up when I make comments about his team. But, I, you know, they're leading the, they're, they were leading the, the league. I mean, it's, it's a big, big blow to a team that's playing that way. Why, why do you think that, I mean, you know, what, what Cuban said and, and uh, you know, when he made the comments about uh, the Heat and Spolstra that seemed to elicit quite a reaction from Van Gundy. And these, these aren't the only ones. Why, why do you think things you say seem to – get under the skin of people or elicit these sorts of... Uh, they must be misconstrued. <laughs> <laughs> There's someone must misconstrue them. Either that or the tenor in which I say them must not go you know, the same way as what the, the tenor of what you know, the conversation is about. But, you know, I... I uh, you know, it's the one that is probably the most egregious is the one that was the Houston thing about disrespecting Rudy because that was so off the cuff and, and so um, solicited by the reporter itself that it was kind of unfair to take take those kind of things on. Cody well, talked yesterday about, the, the said in, the, in response to all the stuff that was going on the last couple of days with the screw up and all that kind of thing, that you coach publicly and it's something that you like to do and it's part of your style. Do you agree with that as an assessment of how you do things? You know, it, it may be uh, an offshoot of my college coach, Bill Fitch, who was a humorist in many ways and said, you know, whatever I say publicly, don't rely on that to be what the real truth is. We talk about what we do in practice and it's going to be conveyed here. But, you know, I will be a distraction and a humorist in a, in a public vein. And, you know, maybe I just carried it out from those days of uh, being underneath that kind of uh, tutelage when I was in college. And watching his career over a number of years, I kind of enjoyed watching Bill Fitch and, and what he had to say when he was a, a coach. So so it, is the truth, it is the truth when you talk to us, though, right? <laughs> what the truth? Well, you said the real truth, you know, would be inside. We're getting the real truth from you, aren't we? Well, it's a, it's a form of the real truth. <laughs> <laughs> it's your own. Do you, I mean, do, is there, you do you use it? You know, do you use media? Do you like to use the media to try to convey? Yeah, I'm just trying to be truthful with one. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, do you sense uh, a different hunger going into this game tonight with a, a similar situation? You're going against an under 500 team at home. Same scenario. You know, it's about activity, and our level of activity has been really limited, and there's there's a reason for it. Um, you know, we, we have uh, a size, we've been going through a variety of changes in how we're doing some defensive things. It's not big, it's just a small thing. With Andrew, we're not as extended as we are defensively, and so the limitation is is that people start thinking, and when you think when you play basketball, you don't react as well. So we didn't react, and those are one of the things that you know, we're trying to get back to. So yesterday, a lot of our practice was spent, you know, let's get this part, the thinking part, done so we can react. Sorry, um, what effect, if any, was on Sunday's game having several players either be late or miss shoot around Sunday morning? Yeah, I, I always think that it affects the, the team's performance. You know, when everybody's not in their places ready to go when the, you know, it's 10 o'clock in the morning, we're supposed to be ready to, to go through the film session. Then everybody's behind a little bit. Everybody's wondering what happened to somebody else. And then the, the messages conveyed aren't there the same way. So, you know, it, it affects, but this, you know, you have to be, uh, grown up enough to know that you know you can't let that affect your own game. Talk about reacting and uh, dealing with a back-to-backer -back here. Uh, is it sometimes a good thing where I don't overthink the room, just react, you play tomorrow night, just go for it? Yeah, well, you know, we have, you know, we always look forward to Phoenix game because it's a, you know, there's a certain animosity that's going to go into this game after our thrashing that we had the last time we played them. Um, so there's going to be something that goes into this, this game. but. The other thing is, is it prepares us for the New York game on Sunday, and so 
you know, as a coaching staff, we look forward to it. You know, talk what's the pace? Hmm? You talk about the pace and what you're playing? Pace, the amount of screen rolls, the activity that we have to have defensively assimilates that. How much did you guys benefit from playing a little quicker? You were at the beginning of the season, more possessions in a game and things like that. It seemed to have a positive effect because it slowed down considerably yeah. over the last couple of weeks. We have. Um, I think it's some of it's the second unit. You know, was playing probably more time, more critical time, and you know, speeding up the game and changing the tempo of the game. But it was interesting, you know, watching that game the other night uh, on video to see Lamar take a rebound off the basket, uh, off the backboard, and be the first guy down. No one ran with him in the third quarter. It was like, you know, maybe it was the second quarter, I should say. You're talking about the other night? Yeah, the, no one no one was ready to run with Lamar when he got the ball off a rebound. And, you know, that, that was telltale sign to me that, you know, we weren't, you know, really looking to pursue anything. We are willing to just kind of plod the court. And, you know, do everything on the half court basis. We have to get some easier baskets. There's no doubt. How much do you personally enjoy the intensity of those Phoenix games uh, in Arizona? Well, you know, we like it. I don't know how much Phoenix likes it because it seems like half the crowd's a you know Laker crowd. But I'm sure the players like it on both teams because there's such a diversity going on, such a you know calls from each section and obviously some confrontation <laughs> in the seats. But you know, it's going to be a, a good game. It's the, these games have been good for the last you know five or six years. With That's the whole issue guys. of off-court distractions, is through your coaching career, is there anything beyond performance they use as variables to measure whether something off-court is distracting to a player or not? No. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just performance. Yeah. I mean, I had Dennis Rodman. I mean, what can you say? <laughs> Dennis would go on a bender for two days and come back and play a great game because he knew how to get ready for a ball game, right. even, even though he needed to blow off steam or whatever he did. <laughs> I don't know what he was doing. <laughs> <laughs>